Hello, um, I think this will probably be a short video. I was just reading about capacitors a little bit because I kind of want to know a little bit more about how they work and like because there's some stuff that I was never very clear about with capacitors in particular. Um, but first I want to mention that I got this this cool little thing finally arrived. It's like a little power supply with like it's like a regulated power supply that connects to a you know just one of these things and that feeds nine volts into this thing and then it it can do five or 3.3 volts and it's like set up to plug into a breadboard which is like you know i don't know super neat i think you just plug it in like that and no more batteries and you can turn it on and off it's got a little light so anyway i think that's you know kind of cool i mean should make this a little easier to experiment with plus uh, these should be, you know, this this is like a regulated supply, so my understanding is, you know, that means the voltage should be very consistent, very consistently 5 volts or 3.3 if I change these settings. So anyway, that's pretty neat. So anyway, the um, thing with capacitors, and this is a capacitor if you've, like, never really seen one before or, you know, don't really know what it is. Um, this one's 100 microfarads. I don't know if you can read that. And 50 volts, which I think is the, is their maximum. I think it means that if you'd hook more than 50 volts up to this, it'd probably, I don't know, burst in a flame or something. I'm not really sure what would happen. Um, and this type in particular is an electrolytic capacitor. And I think that has something to do with like how it's constructed. Uh, something about that, which I don't really fully know. I mean, I read it somewhere. I'm not going to try to explain it because I don't understand it. But in any case... So electrolytic capacitors, as far as I know, they're all like this. They they have like polarity, so they have a minus side and a plus side. A little, you know, a little bit like LEDs. So the current should only go through it in the one direction. And I'm not sure what happens if you hook it up backwards. I'm not going to try that at the moment. It, it's probable it just breaks down, you know, or just doesn't work. I don't know. But one thing that's always confused me about them is I've always thought of capacitors as batteries, but at the same time I see them dotted around circuits and I was never sure why. Well, okay, I'm still not sure why. But what I was reading is that when a capacitor charges up, when when it charges up, the electrons go into the minus side and then they build up in here and it's almost like it's an empty stomach. They they it's like it eats electrons and then eventually it gets full and so my my Confusion was always like, well, what happens then, you know? Because, like, if these are in a circuit, they're going to be filled, like, all the time, I think, right? But but I guess what happens is, is that the electrons flow through it while it's filling up. Once it's full of electrons, the current stops flowing. And that was a critical piece of information that I think I never knew. So what I wanted to do was kind of see that in action. So the the theory, the idea I had was what if we hooked up a regular LED circuit, you know, like we did before, battery lights it up, but then put a re, put a capacitor in the mix here so that it charges it up. Now my theory based on how this, what I was reading, is that the current should go through the, or through the capacitor here until it's fully charged, which I think would mean that once it's fully charged, current stops flowing. And when current stops flowing, the light should shut off. Now, that's my theory. So that's kind of interesting because, you know, that explains maybe one way to, I don't know, get a blinking LED, right? Like, that would be a way to do it, I think, with a clever arrangement of capacitors, probably. Now, I'm not going to do that now because I have no idea what that clever arrangement is. But assuming this capacitor is big enough, and it was the biggest one I had in my little grab bag, um... I don't know if this will work. <laughs> so uh, this might be a very silly video where I hook stuff up and it doesn't work. And then everyone can, you know, explain in the comments about why it's wrong or send me messages on Mastodon. So the first thing I'm going to do is hook up uh, a regular LED circuit because just like in programming, I like to start from a known like base state where things sort of make sense. You know, start with like a simple thing, build and run it and make sure it works. So I'm going to start with that. So we're going to have the plus side goes into the long side of the LED and hopefully you can see that there. So I have to complete the circuit with one of these. Hopefully this is the right size. Yeah, that'll work. So this should be roughly like 
the circuit in one of the earlier videos, you know, the, the bare bones, like light and LED circuit, right? The electrons flow from the minus, which is the, the blue rail here, through the resistor, and they get slowed down because the resistor keeps it from going fast through the wire, which presumably has very little resistance, through the LED. And as the re electrons are flying past the LED's material in there, that causes light to emit. That's essentially how they work. So I guess the idea is that without the resistor, the current flows so quickly, there's so many electrons flowing through here that it probably heats up and immediately breaks down and they burn out. So we have this in here. Okay, that should light up. Now let's see. Okay, good, it does. All right, now I want to add a capacitor in the mix and I want it to like charge. So I think what I'm going to do is replace this wire with a capacitor, right? I think that would work. And the minus, the minus should probably be on this side because this side is going to be more minus than this side. So we hook it up like this and we hook the plus side up to that. So again, my theory is that if I turn it on, electrons should flow through the minus into the capacitor and start charging it. But some of them, presumably keep going, right? It's like it's like it only can charge so fast, I guess. So some electrons keep going and should light the LED, but then when this gets full, no more electrons will be allowed to pass, right? It's like Gandalf on the bridge or something like that. So I think that means that we should see a flash here or something like that. Now, again, I don't know like if this is big enough because I assume this happens very quickly. So maybe the flash will be too quick to see, but let's see. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, it did it. Okay, it didn't do it the second time, but that, I assume, because it's still charged up. Okay, that makes sense. So I imagine if we sat here and waited, like, because I think these things discharge over time. I don't know how long we would have to wait. But, okay, we should be able to see it, though, right? We should see a voltage on across here, I would think, because it's sort of like a battery. So let's see, the plus side is uh, this side, minus side's this side. Oh yeah, there it is, 3.4, and it's falling. So I don't 100% know why it wasn't like 5 volts, because we fed it 5 volts, but maybe the resistor has something to do with that. Okay, it's dropping fast now. <laughs> or my connection here isn't good. Oh, my connection was bad. I need to get little clippy things so that I can clip them on here, and that clearly is the way to go. Um, okay, so it has power in it. Now what I want to do is see if I can light the LED with that. Now I was thinking, you know, I could potentially hook up a switch, but I think it would be easier just to to do what? I think, I can't just turn this around, I don't think, because, because then the, the power would be going the wrong way, wouldn't it? Let's try. It did work. Right, see, see, so the thinking process there is I should be able to turn this around because this charged up, this was minus on this side and the plus went out this way, but see now, compared to the rest of the circuit, the potentials are reversed, I think. We want, we want this positive, the positive side of this thing to go out to negative. That's why I was thinking that it needs to be reversed like that. So, okay, so we, we put it in like this, and of course nothing happens. Charged it up, it flickered. Flip it around. And it discharges through the LED. And because I connected it this way, I guess, it also discharges through the resistor, which means it slows it down. So presumably, presumably if I had a bigger resistor, the flash would be slower, but it might also be dimmer. Um, let me see, this, this resistor I had put in here was 220. If you don't know, uh, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this, they have these colorful bands on them and I don't know if that's coming through real well in the light, but uh, the, there's a color code for determining the resistors. I can never remember what it is, so I just keep them in here. It's, it's not hard. I think like 
the first two colors are two digits and then the third color is like a multiplier so how many times 10 do you multiply it by something like that um but that's how you can have a whole pile of them and figure it out so like what if i this one's 1k so that means 1000 ohms this one here was a 220 so 220 ohms so this is considerably bigger um, presumably the current would flow through this slower so one would think that the uh, capacitor would charge up slower and but but of course the current's going slower so the LED might not be as bright I suppose there's a threshold where the amount of energy the LED needs to light is like you, it's too slow but we'll see Oh, it definitely made a difference. That was a bit slower. Not a ton slower, but a bit slower. Okay, good. See, that confirms that theory. That's a good thing. So now if I discharge it the same way as before, it should discharge equally slowly, I assume. Okay, I saw it flicker, but it didn't... Unless when I touched this LED, this lead, maybe I discharged it through my finger. Here, I'm going to look. Okay, it barely lights up. So it's, it's clearly much slower and so this thing doesn't light up as much because not as many electrons per time period are getting through here right because it's it's slower it's like it's like you turn the faucet on in your house but then you you know you, you the water faucet but then you like turned it to just a trickle yeah i don't know if that comes through it is just the faintest little trickle so it's possible i got really lucky with my initial uh, resistor choice here that it turned out to be quite visible in both well so incidentally and i don't think i mentioned this either about resistors is that you know i've, I've always taken it for granted that there are different resistor values you know i have i have a, a bunch of little baggies here with all kinds of different values but one thing that i i noted here with the resistors look at how they're like the same size Right, this is a 10K and it's like the resistor itself is not really any bigger than this one where it's only 220. It's like how can this be so many times more resistance and not have even remotely different shape? Um, I, just, I just read today that part of that's because, uh, because I guess the way that resistors are made, and, and this is one way, I don't know how these are made because I guess there's different materials, but one way is they basically put something like carbon and then like a glue and they mix it together. And then you just change the ratio of carbon to glue and it makes it more or less resistant. And the glue is there just to, you know, form it into this like blob and then they, they paint a coating over it, I guess. So more carbon means more resist or less resistance because the current can flow through it more easily right with less carbon i think it was carbon um the current can't flow as easily and so therefore it slows it down so it becomes higher resistance so anyway i thought that's interesting so so it must be almost like an aesthetic choice or or maybe it's because of how much voltage they want these to handle for 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 like the size of it because it's really the ratio of the material in there so Anyway, I thought that was kind of cool and has nothing to do with what I was originally talking about. But in any case, that's what this video series is about. It's about me just sort of learning stuff and passing it on or hoping that I'm kind of correct about it. We'll see. <laughs> okay, uh, that's all I really wanted to do this time was just try to make capacitors more real in my head. So hopefully that maybe has helped somebody else out. If not, Maybe it was at least entertaining. I don't know. Um, if you liked it, do the YouTube stuff. I have to say that now. I've been told. I'm supposed to say that at the end of all videos. My kids were very adamant. I have to ask you to like and subscribe. And I guess if you don't like it, then do the opposite of those things. So anyway, bye.